Well, joining us for the entertainment panel, as always, is Abby St. John. Abby, there's a few things to talk about. Marvel finally released their first full look at their upcoming movie, The Eternals. We did get a little piece of that with the Phase 4 trailer, but now that we get a full glimpse of what Chloe Zhao is going to bring to the MCU, what can we take away from this early look? It looks spectacular. That's my first opinion on the trailer. The visu It visually looks absolutely stunning. And of course you have that star-studded cast as well that just makes everyone excited, especially Angelina Jolie. Everyone is saying just her alone makes them excited for this movie. But they finally dropped the trailer, as you said, and the Eternals are ancient aliens who've been living on Earth in secret for thousands of years. That's how they kind of open it up, introduce Reduces them. However, they do state in the trailer that they have chosen not to intervene in any Earth events, and that includes Ultron and, of course, Thanos. And so a lot of fans have been asking, why didn't they step in, especially after half of the universe was wiped out? So there's a lot of questions still up in the air of, you know, where were they when all of this was going on, all of the events that were going on throughout the MCU already? Where were they? And what is going to happen that actually, what is so bad that they're going to come out of hiding? And that is going to be an ancient enemy called the Deviants um, that they're going to be fighting against. So it's going to be interesting to see how big of a threat they actually are, considering that Thanos clearly wasn't as big of a threat for them to come out of hiding. So those are all the questions that are being left up in the air. But I'm very excited for this movie. And I know a lot of fans are too, because it just looks visually spectacular. And of course, like I mentioned, they have that giant cast. Richard Madden, Gemma Chan, Kumal Nanjiani, uh, Lauren Ridolph, Salma Hayek, of course, Angelina Jolie and Kit Harington, plus among others as well. So I think this movie is going to be one of Marvel's biggest movies so far. And you mentioned that the visuals as well, we see those beach scenes, we see those big sets and this and on location shots is just absolutely amazing to see. And I know they did drop a little bit about Captain America earlier on and, and later on in that trailer. So that could be maybe a fun Easter egg for us to kind of dissect later on. Another big news, Abby, we did talk about this before on the panel that Wonka is going to get an origin story. And by Wonka, I mean, Willy Wonka, of course, from the infamous Willy Wonka, the chocolate factory. It was between Tom Holland and Timothy Chalamet. They finally came to a decision and it's, Timothy Chalamet that's going to play the iconic chocolatier a very interesting move Abby in my opinion but I just want to know what you thought of this casting yes I also agree but then again you know Willy Wonka has always been that really weird um character that is just out there and you know so I I would agree that Timothy Chalamet he has a large range he's played many many different types of roles so I think I think this was a good choice and he was their top choice for this film. So the film, you know, it's an origin story of how prior to how Willy Wonka opened up his chocolate factory. And this will also mark the first time that Timothy Chalamet gets to show off his singing and dancing skills as there will be several musical numbers in this film. And it's also the third time that Warner Bros has taken on the Wonka story. You know, the first one being in 1971 starring Gene Wilder as Wonka. And then in 2005, where Johnny Depp starred as that role. So he has some pretty big shoes to fill in those two um, actors. So I think he was a good choice. Just looking back at, you know, his different roles that he's able to do. He has that range that Johnny Depp had has. So I think it was a good choice, but but it will be interesting to see his dancing and singing skills as like I mentioned we haven't really seen those before so it the whole movie in itself is going to be interesting to watch when it comes out there hasn't really been any details of the plot as of yet so once we get more information and even more cast members announced it will start to come together and we'll be able to see what to expect. And like you said there with his singing and dancing chops being displayed, I mean, if we all want to go on YouTube, we can definitely find him in his old rap persona days that we can see his singing there. But we did kind of see a little bit of his singing on SNL, which I did very much enjoy there. One of the last things, Abby, we're talking about, the Sex and the City revival starting to gain a little bit more traction as another notable name is going to be added and a big piece to that name is going to be added to that uh, reboot there. 
Yes, Chris Noth, Chris Noth, who played the notorious Bachelor with major commitment issues, Mr. Big, has been confirmed he is returning as the character because a lot of fans were speculating back when it was announced um, if he was going to return or not. We finally have confirmation that he has or he will be returning as that role. And executive producer Michael Patrick King went on to say, how could we ever do a new chapter of Sex in the City uh, story without Mr. Big? Now, that was also coming as a fact that we know that one of the four main women, uh, Kim Cattrall, who played the sexually liberated Samantha, she won't be returning. So it's nice to know that another former original cast member will be joining the cast because they have a huge, huge hole to fill in Kim Cattrall's absence because she was one of the most iconic characters on that show so they have a massive hole to fill and a lot of questions to answer uh, which we don't know as of yet but it's nice to know and it's exciting to know that Mr. Big will be returning as his character so I'm excited for that I'm still disappointed that Samantha won't be in this revival as she like I said was the iconic character, but it's going to be interesting to see where they go with this um, ten episode uh, revival. And like you said, it's just it's going to be interesting because there's not there's it's important to have those main pieces that started it all and hopefully can round it out and hopefully maybe even potentially finish it if they don't decide to do anything else besides the revival. Abby St. John, thanks so much. Thank you.